Hello and welcome to the Boat Shed. My name is John and this boat behind me is Antidote. I'm an engineer and a sailor with the dream of fixing up this old sailboat to go sailing around the world. Now I've got a lot of work to do first and today we're mostly focused on trying to get that vacuum bag set up at the bow of the boat. So stick around to the end of the video to see if that thing works. Now let's get started by going up and seeing how the work we did last week turned out. So let's start breaking these clamps away. You can see a little bit of squish through. This first block went in very nicely and it'll serve as a great perimeter for the vacuum bag later on. All the pieces dry fit pretty nicely still after we glued this one in. My goal is going to be to try to get a vacuum bag line along this back piece to bring all these three down and I'll cut in a section here for that G10 piece. The stay sail fitting is right here. And then I want to, because I planed these side blocks down about a sixteenth of an inch, I want to just mark a line here, a rough line that I can mark so I can sand that down and I know that I'll only sand a sixteenth on the edge and I'll feather that in and that'll just make it a little easier when I go to get the next layer on here. This will already kind of be a little more shaped the way that I want it. It's a wobbly bottom skin, so I'm sort of doing my best to, to flatten this out with as little fairing as we can possibly get away with. So before we glue this down, we need to brace below. We'll do that right away and we'll prep these side pieces and then hopefully we'll be able to test the vacuum bag here soon. The palm sander with some 60 grit does quick work of the edges to feather them down nicely to make the transition to the bulwarks. And now since we're going to be vacuum bagging all this material down, the kusa doesn't have any drillings for relief for the resin to flow. So we're going to lay some of those out now and I did them on about every 6 inch centers. Probably could have done tighter spacing but we'll talk about that later. plan is to replace the Kusa with G10 underneath the potentially highly loaded stay sail fitting. Since we have multiple layers of core thickness here, the plan is to progressively enlarge them as we go from top to bottom. Using the tile saw here to cut out the G10, and it's a great idea recommended by one of the viewers. These diamond blades are really resilient and they're designed to cut glass. So I used that to cut the piece out and I put a relief cut down the center line so that I'd be able to conform this to the gentle curve. Now we just need to make a little bit of room for that piece inside this old Kusa board. There we have it. <laughs> That's the plan. Cool. Well, I think it looks good. The goal right now is to make some braces for the underside of the bow so we can maintain the correct shape or crown as we lay in and glue in these new pieces of kusa and some foam. I've measured at a few spots and the, the crown or the height of the cord of the circle is about a one quarter inch per foot span, which is right in line with what Bob Perry suggested I would find. And so I wanna make a brace that is approximately four feet wide and a brace that's approximately three feet wide and that will get us a nice span, about 16 inches between the bulkhead, this first brace, the second brace, and then at the bow where there's more stiffness. So there's a couple ways to do that. You can make some calculations based on your span and then you can get out your mighty long tape and draw out a circle. Now I needed one that was about 25 feet and that works fine. I thought instead what I would try is just to print off one to one scale and this here is just four pages that completes that 34 inch wide span. And then I have one here for the next one as well. And so I'm just gonna tape these together and when I drew this in SketchUp, I drew a box around it so I would have reference points to make sure that all three points line up where the printer cuts off at the margin and then I'll know that it's relatively straight and this is going to be I mean this is not rocket science it doesn't need to be exact so we'll cut these out line this up tape them together glue this down onto the 2x6 cut it out 
The other thing I can do is I can put a straight edge along the paper to make sure that it is totally straight. This should be 34 inches wide. I'm measuring 34 and an eighth. Probably close enough for jazz here. And then the height in the middle should be just under three quarters of an inch. And we measure that at just under three quarters of an inch. Feeling pretty good about this one. I would say that worked pretty well and didn't take any longer than doing it the old fashioned string way. Probably just as accurate, works fine for what I'm doing here. And for me, much more convenient right now. Okay, I'm gonna spray this outside because I don't want everything in here to get sticky. And I'll be right back. Okay, well, I neglected to think about how windy it is outside, but that seemed to work out okay. Okay, so that gives me a nice cut line for this piece of wood. Okay, that's ready for the cutter. We have installed a couple of braces up here at the bow now, and this panel is feeling much more stable than it was before. So really well supported, whereas previously there was quite a significant dip in it without the braces. I think we're almost ready to start vacuuming this down. Today we have a little bit of repair to do to the shed. We've had crows landing on it all summer, and I did not anticipate that, and they have very sharp talons. It's poking holes in the roof. It's a seven mil plastic that I used, a marine shrink wrap. No match for their sharp claws. So we are going to do a little bit of repair and we're going to put some metal down to prevent that from happening. Today is our last sunny day here in the Pacific Northwest for the foreseeable forecast. They're calling it an atmospheric river. So I guess that's just fancy speak for it. It's going to rain a lot. So let's get busy here. So there's some talon holes there, you can see. So we're gonna do a little wipe down with some isopropyl first just to make sure everything's clean up here. The tape hopefully sticks well. Got a little clean spot here. Start taping up some holes. Well, we are just about ready to start vacuum bagging down the core at the bow of the boat. Before I do that, this is my first time undertaking a project like that. And you know, I'm watching Matt over at Duracell vacuum bag the most incredible things down. And I'm hoping that I can achieve even somewhere close to that. <laughs> so I did pick up this little guy. So in here we have 
a Gast DOA P704-AA. This is a little vacuum slash pressure pump. This is supposed to do 25 inches of mercury and yeah, one CFM of air movement. So let's get this thing set up, rigged up for what we want to do and give it a try. I just want to mock it up with this piece of G10. We'll use this as a backing plate. So I've got a little bit of breather that's cut off hose here. We're going to shut it off and check for pressure loss. Vacuum bagging tape. Got my new to me vacuum pump. This is bagging film. We'll throw an extra gauge on there so we can check at the part what the pressure is. And then here's where we'll take the air out. So we'll get all this set up, see how this goes. I'm not actually making any parts here. I'm just trying to get confidence in this system, including this new to me pump and all of my other vacuum bagging parts and procedure. As I'm putting down this vacuum tape, I've decided to tear the paper backing a bit and stretch it around the corners instead of doing overlap joints. This just reduces the number of leak opportunities. Okay, and I was told to always store that flat. Apparently, like if you put it up like this or on, a, on an angle, it can get all warped. So, store that flat. Let's put our breather in. Now I'm sure that when you're doing this, a common problem is to get the bag all done and then realize that you forgot to put your little pucks in. <laughs> Let's not forget that today. And we'll try to put a few pleats in this just so I can kind of like learn how that goes. Pleats are often necessary to get even pressure along your whole part. You don't really want the material to bridge along an inside corner. I'm just practicing that technique here, even though this material is called stretch -alon, and it actually is supposed to take about 300% of its size in stretching. So probably overkill here, but just trying to get familiar. Got some learning to do here, that's for sure. And that might be too tight over here, honestly. I probably should've done two pleats there too. This is why we do a dry run, figure this stuff out. So we'll plug in our pump. Okay, well let's start this up, see how it does. This pump's capable of approximately 25 inches of mercury, so we're almost running at full capacity here, which is awesome. So we'll shut off the air to do a little leak down test. Definitely got a leak. You see how it's already fallen over? <laughs> Careful viewers might have already spotted the problem here. When I put the air connectors on, I didn't stretch the material very tight, and so there were small creases underneath the mating surfaces that caused very small air gaps to form. When you're putting those things on, you really want to hold everything really nice and tight in position and then screw those down as tight as you can to get a good seal. So things here seem to be working pretty well. I think we have enough experience now to take this up on deck and do a dry run on the bow. So I'm gonna tape that edge first. I have a pleat here, a big one, and then we'll tape this edge and then we'll do the front and the back with some pleats since it has to overcome the step. I think that's the order that's gonna give me the best chance of success. We'll see, first time. Well, that was probably operator error there. Well, as you can see, I've come up a little short here on the port side. I went ahead and stuck all that length down without really triple checking that it was covering the entire area, so I moved it up a little too far. Now, I could go ahead and take this off and redo it, but since this material is somewhat stretchy and it is going to cover on the entire area where the glued surface is, and this is only a dry run, we're gonna be okay here. Well, we'll have to stretch this area. You guys are watching me learn everything right here on the spot. I should have started that further back. This won't be the prettiest bag that there ever was, but for testing the concept here to make sure that we have a good seal and can actually pull this part down with vacuum, I think it'll work just fine. Really nervous. <laughs> All right, well, moment of truth.
Right on guys, well, so here I've got the pump turned off, my valve is shut, and it's still holding really nicely. So this looks like we've got a good vacuum. So if this isn't a good time to ask for a like, I don't know when is. So go ahead and hit that like button for me if you appreciate that we got this vacuum bag to work. That's awesome. One last quick clean here and then we're ready to start mixing up some epoxy, troweling it on, and then we'll be gluing these pieces down. Let's hope this works. Well, let's leave things there for now. I'm really excited about how things are coming together. It is a lot of work to get all those parts installed and the vacuum bag down before your epoxy kicks off, but I think we managed to get it. So come back next time to see how that turns out as well as what other interesting fun projects we're up to here in the shed. Now I'd like to give a really big thanks to all the folks over on Patreon that are helping to support this project. Over on that group, we post real-time updates and some behind the scenes content. If you'd like to get involved in that, all of the funds generated there help to produce these videos and support this project. We'll put a link in the description down below if you'd like to get involved in that. We release new videos here about the boat project every second Saturday. If this is your first time joining us and you'd like to get caught up from the very start, this playlist will help you get oriented with the project. And here's a video that YouTube thinks you should watch and I have no idea what it is. I hope that it's good. If you are subscribed, great. If you're not and you'd like to be, there's a button for you right here. Okay, see you next time. See she sells seashells. That's so hard. Seashells, seashells by the seashore. Yeah, it's not bad.